This is Stacy Marshall with Printware Magazine. Matt Vassallo with the RidingStoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are or that regular. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to the show. It's Friday, December 6, 2019. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And uh, I am Aaron Cam- uh, Eric Campbell. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm sitting in for Aaron Montgomery, uh, and you can find me at ericcampbell.com. But today, we have a special show. We're turning over our microphones again for the Quarterly Women in the Industry program. This is the awesome program hosted by Christine Shreve. And we know her friend of the show, and she is leading a discussion about safety in the workplace. Now, in all hopes, we'll have everybody that we list here, <laughs> but we've had some trouble getting guests on and off. And as you guys know, uh, without technical problems, it wouldn't be the two regular guys. <laughs> but uh, we've got Janine Edwards, who's a friend of the show, VP of Marketing over at Free Loom. We've got experienced decorators Jane Swansea of Swan Threads coming out of Houston, Texas, and Jillian Allen of the Cat's Pajamas out of Thibodeau, Louisiana. So I cannot wait to get these folks in. We'll have a better intro when they all come in, and hopefully we get everybody live and on the air shortly. But can't wait to turn it over to Christine. It's always a fantastic show. All right. Now, with that, let's start into a little bit of news, but I really want to go with some personal news first. Uh, it's all Reggie Award season still going on, folks. So up until December 12th, real shortly here, we still have voting going on for the Reggie Awards, and it is hot and heavy. So if you haven't voted yet, you need to get over to the website. As we know, that is tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. Uh, jump in and vote, and then you can join us, Friday, join us uh, Friday the 13th for all the winners and announcements. And hey, if you're a nominee, uh, make sure you tell your friends to go in there and vote. And that's the science of it, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it is science, as we it know. Science. <laughs> okay, well, I want to talk real quick about uh, ThreadX 2020, powered by SGIA. It's just around the corner. It's February 23rd through 25th. And I know that sounds like next year, but it's around the corner. (laughs) And uh, Eric, this year it's going to be near me. It's going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I think about 15 minutes from my house. So, uh, by the way, February is a great time to visit the Valley of the Sun. So uh, uh, sign up for ThreadX. The two regular guys will be on hand. We'll be there absorbing knowledge and doing interviews throughout. So uh, to see a list of the speakers and get more information, go to sgia.org slash events slash ThreadX, and I'm sure Eric's getting that up on the screen. And Eric, there's even going to be a beer and brats night. So the two regular beer and brats night. There, yeah. (laughs) I'm sure you'll be there, man. (laughs) Uh, I will definitely be there (laughs) for both the beer and the brats. It's just it's like my favorite bar, cold beers and cheeseburgers. You know, it says what Uh, it is. (laughs) Well, come on, truth in advertising, folks. Not to mention exactly what you want when you get there. You know, (laughs) (laughs) exactly. Hey, Aaron. uh, Aaron. (laughs) Eric. Before we dive in. Uh, we want to thank everyone who uh, is checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast today. If you are listening to the podcast version, we would appreciate you sharing with friends so that they can become regulators too. And uh, we would also love and appreciate you giving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever it is that you're listening to the show. We are always looking for new guests and new ideas. So if you or anyone would like to join us, go to calendly.com slash two, the number two, regular guys. Uh, with your show ideas. And if you're watching us live right now, join in with comments and questions and reach out to your industry friends right now and have them join us too. So Absolutely, folks. I mean, you have no idea how much we love hearing from all you new folks. There's people who have never been on that I know you think, oh, what if I don't have enough to say? Jump on, sign up. You can't imagine how great it is to integrate with the regulators and find out all these new ideas. And we would love to have you on. Uh, if you're in the industry, the <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. If you run out of stuff to talk about, it's not like Terry and I won't manage it. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> absolutely jump on and get in on that as soon as you can sign up because sometimes those spaces will fill up quickly, especially during trade show season. Exactly right. Well, Aaron, with that, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Impressions Expo. What is Impressions Expo? Impressions Expo, formerly ISS, is the premier trade show dedicated to the imprinted and decorated apparel industry. Five shows are produced annually in each region of the U.S., including Long Beach, California, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Fort Worth, Texas. 
Each of the five annual shows also features over 30 seminars and hands-on workshops in categories such as screen printing, embroidery, digitizing, digital decorating, and much more. Visit ImpressionsExpo.com for more details and see us at the shows in 2020. Exclusively for two regular guys listeners, the regulators. Use the promo code regular guys, i.e. Again, that is regular guys, i.e. for a free expo pass. All right. All right. Thanks again <laughs> to uh, Impressions Expo for being a, a, a new sponsor for us this year. Oh, no, absolutely. As you know, we are definitely involved in the Impressions Expo, so definitely see us on the floor. Come up, say hi, and uh, join us. Be one of the regulators and get involved. So with that, however, uh, let's see if we can turn over the floor and get to the people you really want to hear from. I mean, you know, Terry and I are great, but <laughs> we all know what you're here for, folks. Uh, let's bring on friend of the show and the one who coined the term regulators for our loyal listeners, Christine Shreve. Let me bring her in. Hello, Christine. Hi, guys. Good Hi. to see you. Uh, good, good to see you, too. too. Now, I'll introduce Christine a little bit. We all know she's the director of marketing at Enmart and her parent company, Ensign Emblem. Uh, and she developed and writes two blogs for them, the Enmart Threadgate blog and the Subless Stuff blog. However, if you're a DAX attendee, you know also that she is a wonderful educator from the industry. And I know, because we have written together a very long time, she also writes a great deal for industry trade magazines. So I'd love to have Christine on. And anybody who don't know Christine, uh, follow her now. So follow oh, her. Well, thank you. And That's read, very right. sweet. And if you don't know me, you can definitely find me in the women in garment decoration group on facebook yes. quick plug because it's a good place and you should all join us if you're female very good <laughs> sorry guys awesome. we're we're keeping it girls only at this point but women only rather <laughs> no, it was awesome though we keep hearing really great things about the group and to think that group kind of started from discussions you had oh here yeah is just i awesome. mean i, I imagine i have said several times that aaron and terry are our grandfathers so <laughs> <laughs> and i <laughs> guess eric you would have, you would be an honorary grandfather too so i don't know how there to get go. that i thought oh, oh. industry veteran was bad enough but grandfather hurts a little bit <laughs> well how about godfather is godfather better you are a fairy yeah, yeah. godfather <laughs> I, I was thinking weird <laughs> uncle but Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, Weird Uncle works too. Weird Uncle works for Terry for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, let me try and bring in our guests here. I think we're going to go ahead and start with, uh, let's see if we can get Janine in. We have Janine Edwards, and we're going to add her to the stream and see if our audio works. We've had some trouble earlier. If she can't hear us, we may have to stop. But let's go ahead and bring in we'll try it. Janine Edwards. Uh, Janine, uh, we hear you, Janine. Can you hear us all now, Janine? Yes, I can hear everyone now. Yay! So, <laughs> fantastic. That is, Pretty like sure said, that wasn't the case. So. Yes, <laughs> no, exactly. we didn't have yeah. that, folks. <laughs> so if you if you don't know Janine already, Janine is currently the, v, uh, the VP of Marketing and Merchandising for Fruit and Loom and Jersey's Activewear and has over 25 years experience working on globally recognized apparel brands. And you may have meet, met Janine out at the events. I know I did. So mm -hmm. great to have you on, Janine. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Yes. And next, we're going to bring in Jillian Allen, <laughs> born in a castle in Scotland. Mm -hmm. No, really. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping right into the bios, folks. I love that. <laughs> uh, Jillian was a member of United Kingdom Immigration Service's first ever Scottish enforcement arrest team. Uh, she moved to Texas with her husband in 2005 and has worked with many universities and research institutions, uh, leading teams of interviewers and carrying out social research in many inner cities across the USA. So like me and like many of us, slid sideways into garment decorating, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah. So in 2012, she started the Cat's Pajamas, offering embroidery services, and she became interested in designing and moved on to other mediums, including rhinestones and screen printing. Uh, Jillian moved to Thibodeau, Louisiana in September of this year. So that is awesome. Welcome in, Jillian. And she Thank did you. not she did not wear her pajamas today, but it was discussed. <laughs> How I mean, do you know what's right, underneath? <laughs> well, this is true. I can only see you from the waist up. So. <laughs> I've always told people, I'm like, you don't know. I it's all yeah, short you here. Know. You don't know. Well, you don't know. I'm, I'm in Huntington Beach, California right now, so I am wearing shorts. So well, there oh, you are. There we go. There we go. There there we go. Right. Well, last and most certainly not least, someone who I'm very happy to welcome to the show, we're going to bring in Jane Swansea. Hello. Jane. Hello. Yes, Jane. And she can hear us and everything. It, yeah. It's like we meant to do this, folks. 
<laughs> a native of East Texas, Jane has lived in Houston for 45 plus years and started doing machine embroidery at the home machine in 2002 uh, using insurance money left over from Paris due to a tropical storm, Tropical Storm Allison. Mm. Despite not being Ooh. a fan of flooding, she's thankful for yeah. that storm changing her life. Uh, in 2004, her customer load outgrew her home machine. She upgraded to a commercial single head, uh, fully intending to keep working her real job. Any of us have done that before. Uh, I did that for my real schooling uh, <laughs> while building up the business. Uh, two weeks later, she started working for embroidery business full time and has become a licensed vendor for the huge Houston livestock show, huge show, and rodeo. Uh, Jane is trying to slow down and doesn't solicit any new business, but takes care of whatever comes her way and lives with her husband and two cats in Northwest Houston. Welcome in, Jane. Hello. <laughs> that was the other possible theme, by the way, today was cats. We were thinking everybody could have a cat to hold and we could do the Bond villain thing or something, but it didn't really work. I, I had to shut the door to keep mine out. <laughs> Me too. Every time I've done the show from home, there's a, a dire feeling of when the cat's going to start yowling under the mm -hmm. door. Ours has learned that to get the best attention is to put your nose under the door and yowl at max volume. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm always go. concerned that'll happen. All right. With that, though, I'm going to turn this over to Christine. And Terry and I are going to fade away into the background as we the do. The fairy godfathers <laughs> will fade away now. <laughs> yes. So we're going to disappear. And Christine, take it away. All right. Thank you. Yep. Here we are, ladies. Thank you all for being here. I am so grateful that you're taking the time to do this. I think it's a really important topic, which is why I wanted to cover it. And um, really what we're looking at is women in personal safety, not necessarily just in the workplace, but in the world. And what we think about that and how we've experienced it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna start throwing out a statistic here because I found a lot of them when I was researching. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, 71% of females who travel for business said they face greater risk than their male counterparts. Have you ever felt unsafe when traveling and what precautions do you take? And Janine, I know you said you had some good stories about this. So let's start with you on this one. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think I've been traveling for a while. I think, you know, I was to the point where I thought, okay, I'm at the age where you know, hopefully I'm not going to be, you know, have any more of these. Mm -hmm. But just this year, I was actually at um, a business class hotel. I was at Hil Hilton Garden Inn and I was there with a couple of coworkers and we had actually agreed to meet down at the bar and then we were going to go get something to eat. And so I get down there on time. They are, of course, late. And so I order a drink. And um, as I'm sitting there and I'm sitting at the hotel bar, this guy slithers down the couch <laughs> right up next to me. And then he you know, starts talking to me. He's showing pictures. He tells me he's a cowboy. He shows pictures. <laughs> and he's got his flip phone and he's showing me pictures of himself on his horse, which I swear to God was a shot of Kevin Costner. <laughs> he's talking and the conversation, he keeps talking. And the conversation quickly goes, say, well, we were to go up to your room and mess around. And I said, well, like, that's going to happen. That's when he got a little mad at that point. And fortunately, my coworker showed up at, at this point, and he's <clears throat> six foot four. And so the, the guy left. But it was like, I'm sitting there going, you know, I thought I was past the age where I had to put up with this crap when traveling. And I'm at a night. Mm -hmm. It's a Hilton Garden Inn, for heaven's sakes. And the bartender was standing right there in front of us with his arms folded, glaring at the guy. And still, you know, in this day and age, you still have these things happen. To me, it's just, um, it's, it's amazing. It is. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just so sad because like you said, you at some point you think, okay, there's going to be an end point to this. Yeah, cut off to this. And, yeah. but it doesn't seem to be. And it's, I, I feel like sometimes it's maybe men do experience it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe there are predatory women that are yeah. sliding up to the guys and saying the same thing, but I don't know that they experience it the same way that we do. And I forgot to uh, turn my phone off. So excuse me for a moment <laughs> while I unplug my phone. Um, there we go. Now we're good. <laughs> I think the amazing thing about this was that, so, you know, my coworker is just appalled because he's got a daughter who's just entering the workforce. She's like mm -hmm. in her 20s. And he goes, can you believe the nerve of that guy? And he just goes on and on and on. And I'm standing there and there's um, somebody else in the industry who's standing there. And we're both laughing at him. We're, we're both women. Mm -hmm. Brian, this stuff goes on all the time. <laughs> Where have you been? You know? Yeah. And, 
I think, you know, when we talk, when we think about, you know, we probably don't talk about for this. We don't, you know, we don't pass these episodes along to our boss, oh, sure. our husband, to our brother, you know, to our fathers. We just don't do that because it's kind of embarrassing. We just want to move on. But there was one thing I saw um, sometime in the last year or so on Saturday Night Live that I thought was great. And every guy needs to watch it. And it's a skit that they did called Welcome to Hell. Please, <laughs> you need to watch it because they nailed it. They nailed, they nailed what we have to live for, you know. Um, okay. Not every day, thank goodness, but occasionally these things happen. Well, I think you made a good point when you said that women don't mention this stuff. It happens mm -hmm. and we kind of go, well, that's just part of being yeah. female. And I want to talk about that a little bit. And I'm just wondering, um, Jillian, let's, let's throw this one to you a little bit. Have you ever had experiences like this? And did you tell anybody? Well, funny you should say that because the first time it happened to me was my very first trip to the US. Oh, dear. I, was, <laughs> I was in a hotel in San Diego with a group of other um, companions and we had to go to somebody else's room to pick something up for the group. Mm -hmm. So we get in the elevator and there's this guy in the elevator holding a glass with what appeared to be whiskey, okay? Mm. So, you know, think nothing of it. We get in on the second floor. We get off on the sixth. He's still in the elevator. Fine, no problem. We get what we went to get, come back to the elevator to go back to the second floor, and he's still in the elevator. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we get off at the second floor, and he follows us. Mm -hmm. Now, there were two of us, and we get to the room we're going to, and that's fine. We get in the room. And I called down to the hotel front desk. Mm -hmm. I gave them a very good description of the gentleman, right down to the fact that I thought it was whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> About 10 minutes later, there's a knock on the door. And there's the same gentleman. And he says oh. to us, I just thought I'd introduce myself. I'm the security guard for the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, he was most appreciative of the fact that we did say something. We didn't just ignore this vague guy wandering about the hotel. We actually mm. called. And he didn't know if it was because we were British. That was a possibility. But I've always said, you know, safety is something that you do all the time. It's being aware mm. of your surroundings. It's thinking, that's odd. That's out of place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think I think you're absolutely right. And it's it's just so weird to me, though, that this is something that women do like instinctively, automatically, just because we know. Uh, Carolyn just said, as strong, independent women, we tend to make eye contact in our business mm -hmm. life. And some men take that as a come on. I think that's very true. So but I just Jane, what's been your experience with this? When I was younger, it happened, you know, and you just kind of fluff it off. Mm -hmm. I have found in the last few years when I go someplace, men don't really approach me. And I think that it, fortunately for me, when my resting face, you know, I don't look approachable. And I'm okay with that, you know. <laughs> I like that. You know, like that. I, you know what that face I'm talking about. And I understand. So, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. But then I also don't travel a lot. Uh, I go to Fort Worth once a year, you know, mm -hmm. and I stay at the same place and everybody knows me. And, you know, if somebody starts talking to me at the bar or whatever like that, you know, I'll visit with them but when I put this face on they <laughs> usually go away <laughs> but That's it's funny what Jillian was saying about being aware my husband mm -hmm. has a, a a phrase he uses all the time being in the yellow zone and it has to do with shooting and that's always being aware of your situation what's around mm -hmm. you who's around you mm -hmm. I see this all the time you're at the grocery store or wherever and people walk out of the store they're on their phone yeah. they don't even yeah. look you know and step out in front of you they're, they're the ones that get uh, uh attacked or get 
you know, mm-hmm. their purse snatched or whatever like that. You just always have to be aware of everything around you. Well, and it's a sad, I, I mean, it's kind yeah. of a sad reality, but it is a reality that if you're female, you have to pay more attention. You just mm-hmm. do. And I mean, that's not to the gate because I know men get attacked and all that too. Right. But there's just a, it's a little different circumstance for women. And it's just crazy how simple things that you would think, like going to the bar and having a drink or walking yeah. out of a store or getting on an elevator, you always have that extra second of calculation before you do it. And I, if, I think that's something that we need to talk more about because I don't think everybody realizes it. So yeah, that, that um, I think there's definitely some good points there. Plus y'all had good stories. <laughs> I mean, not that I like the stories, but I they were good stories. So thank you for that. Um, the next question is actually inspired by something that was mentioned in the Women in Garment Decoration group, which is there was a member of the group who had a customer. She had a building on her property that was separate from her home that was her business. She was there alone and a customer was angry about something and came in and made a huge fuss to the point where she actually locked the door to the building and was hiding, hoping that her husband could come and get him to go away because he was that angry and being very aggressive and so that really brings me to my next question which is have you ever dealt with a customer that was aggressive or angry and how did you handle it and how concerned are you about that I guess when you deal with customers or or you know suppliers or anybody you're dealing with in a business sense Jane I'm going to start with you on this one Well, I've been lucky. I haven't had a customer like that. But then I work from home and Mm -hmm. rarely does anybody come here and especially anybody that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd like to say that my work has always made everybody happy. That's not (laughs) really the case. (laughs) But they just don't go come here. And and we've just, you know, after what felt like 4,000 years the freeway that gets them to me is finally open. People might come more, but it's just not the nature of the way I do my business. But I have at some trade shows had some suppliers that made me go, you know, because oh, really? of the way they, mm-hmm. yeah, just, you know, like, oh, really? You think that line is going to work and I'm going to go anywhere with you? And then I put the face on. But. <laughs> has many uses exactly but uh, you know fortunately so far I haven't had anybody that got really angry with me that I had to deal with it you know that's good Mm -hmm. Jillian what about you Um, not so much uh, in this current industry like Jane I work from home so that certainly helps but in one of my previous incarnations, um, I had to go and interview people in their homes. Ooh. Now, the, the fact of it was we all knew where I was going. You know, my superiors would know. But I was in this one address, um, not far from Fort Worth, Jane. Uh, and the gentleman in, in conversation, which we were in the middle of a taped interview, but in the middle of it, he said to me, um, don't you feel unsafe when you come to these homes and you don't know who you're meeting with? Um, You know, and and then proceeded to say to me, you know, I've got six guns and I've got this and I've got that. And I'm like, ah, okay. And at that time I was not a concealed handgun license owner. Let me just say that at that point I had never fired a gun. Um, So my answer to him was, well, I could understand why you might, think I would feel unsafe but the truth is that yes my boss knows where I am it's part of our protocol that I tell her when I arrived at your home and that I call her when I leave your home um you know she isn't she knows how long this interview takes and she knows exactly where I am and that kind of set him back And it was so funny because about five minutes later, my computer developed a problem and I had to stop that interview and go home. (laughs) Oh dear. I I know, what a shame. Um, I was not going back into that address and Mm -hmm. my boss sent a gentleman interviewer after that. 
it was sad that it happened, but you know, safety does come first. And if he thought he was going to intimidate me or whatever he thought, no. Uh, you know, if you see something that makes you uncomfortable, get out. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And the protocols in place is always a good thing too if you're going somewhere. It actually wasn't, but <laughs> well, I made up but on I that think case. I mean, sounds good. <laughs> good thinking for well, and that's I think half of staying safe sometimes is being able to think on your feet and diffuse the situation because people are nuts. And Janine, I know you you work a little differently, but have you ever had customers come at you frothing and raving or? You know, I've, I've, I think I've been pretty fortunate in this respect that, you know, in my job, I've always been able to take along a wing man or a wing woman with me where the situation might have been a little questionable and I might have known that up front. Um, so um, I will say that um, it's, you know, the, the one situation that I can think of is, is actually just having to do, uh, at one point in time, I was responsible for doing in-home customer research surveys. And so we had actually contracted with a company to do this. And so there is, and, and we're in Chicago, and you have to go do this type of research. You have to do it across a variety of different type of demographics. And so we're in some neighborhoods in Chicago that perhaps you know are, aren't that safe and households that you go in and these people don't have a lot of money. You can tell that right off the bat. And I think there we were just always really good about getting in. It was three of us and then doing what we had to do and just getting out to the place. Yeah, that's really what you have to do. And um, was unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get through all the questions that we have, but I wanted to have Eric do the Printavo ad, but he has not replied to my chat yet. So I think we'll go on. To, on oh, there he is. I'll jump in real quick. Sorry, folks. Okay. <laughs> I was watching the comments and stuff too and listening. You guys are having a great show. I hate to even interrupt it at all, but I will jump in really quickly and give a word from one of our sponsors over here at Printavo. So sorry for the extra interruption. So let's talk about organization. Keeping your shop organized is crucial to growing your screen printing business. Printavo helps thousands of shops keep their team on the same page and look professional to their customers. If you're always getting tapped on the shoulder with questions, missing order due dates, or just ready to get to the next step in your shop, Printavo is your solution. Printavo allows shops to create consistent quotes, automate quote and art approvals, schedule jobs, collect payment, and now create online stores, all inside one platform. Being cloud-based, you can even use Printavo from home and with remote employees too. Printavo has a free trial and demo, which you can sign up for at their website, printavo.com. Thanks again to, for Printavo uh, helping us make this awesome episode possible. Yay. And uh, with that, I'm going to drop back out again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'll give you a high sign, what, about five minutes before we're done? <laughs> if you like to. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks, guys. Um, well, since we've already established that we're probably not going through all the questions I wrote, I'm going to skip around a little bit because there's a few that I really did want to discuss. And one of them is really the issue of why women might be more reluctant to speak up about safety issues or uncomfortable things that happen to them. Do you think it's because they're that we're worried as a gender about people thinking we're weak or we shouldn't be allowed to go out by ourselves or whatever? Or is it because we're worried that people won't believe us? So Jillian, I haven't put you on the spot first <laughs> yet. So I'm going to hit you first with this one. I think there's a lot to be said for both um, thoughts there that, you know, mm -hmm. might be seen as being weak. But I also think that there's a third. Um, we actually don't want to tell the person we're talking to that we might be a good target for them. If we mm -hmm. tell them Fair something enough. happened mm -hmm. and this is how we didn't know how to react, mm -hmm. I think there's an element of how well do you necessarily know the person you're talking to? I'm sorry, but very often, if you look at some of the statistics you pulled up, how many times does somebody actually know their attacker? Oh, um, it, that's totally um, true. That's I, totally I don't want true. To scare anyone, but that is the thing. So I, I think there's almost a self defense mechanism in play. We don't talk about it other than perhaps to our friends, our close friends and family, because we just don't know. 
Well, but um, this question is a tough one for me because I'm very personally invested in it. But one of the things that I want to throw out there and I want to see what you guys think about it is if we don't talk about it, the person who harassed us or did whatever could also go on and do it to other people. And I think it's because we don't talk about it that sometimes this sort of thing happens. So I don't know. Janine, what's your take on this? Well, I pretty much will talk about anything. So okay, fair enough. So, you know, if something happens to me. You know, I I I will pass it along. I do remember once fairly early on in my career <clears throat> when I was younger and more attractive, obviously. <laughs> I was I was actually at work, and one of the customers came in, and I handed him something that he was looking for. And when he left, he patted me on the butt, and I thought, oh, yeah, really. Yeah, really. You know, and so I go and I tell my boss and I said, you know, when he left, he patted me on my butt. And she goes, oh, honey, you're such a good customer. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. So anyway, I, I just kind of moved on from that. And, you know, when dealing with that person, again, I, I kind of stayed at a good arm's so. Oh, that's just, honey, he's such a big customer. Oh, <laughs> this makes me yeah. want to go back in time and punch <laughs> This was a while ago. So. <laughs> well, yeah, but still. And Jane, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, well, there's well, Carolyn popped up again. Let's read this real quick. As salespeople, we are programmed to be nice, and then we find ourselves in situations. But you have to be clear where your line is if the conversation starts to go there. Very true. True, true. Well, I haven't had much problem in my later years, but for way too long, I worked for Armor Food Company, and I called on the meat market to one of the local grocery store chains and there is nothing I haven't heard. No way I haven't been propositioned. Most of them didn't touch me, but there was always something mm -hmm. said. And I had a standard line because these were all union butchers. And even though I wasn't union, but they were union and I would, someone would proposition me and I said, well, you know, I would do that, but because you're union and what you do, what I do to you, I have to do to all the rest of them. So <laughs> am, am I the first stop of the day or am I the 10th stop of the day? How oh. many other butchers could I possibly have been with before I got to you? And it just <laughs> shut them down. Oh, you know? and that's funny and sad at the same time. Yeah, it, it, it was. I was very glad to be gone from that career. Oh, I imagine yeah. so. Well, I want to talk a little bit um, about the being scared thing, because I had an experience that showed me why a lot of women are. I am a uh, sexual abuse survivor, and I turned the guy in. And this was some years after it happened to me. But um, when I turned him in, what I was hoping for was compassion. What I got was we will subpoena your journals. We will call, talk to every boyfriend you've ever had, everyone you've ever kissed, everyone you've ever looked at. We will go through everything about your family. I mean, this was a school situation. The gentleman was a teacher. Yeah. Um, and it got to the point where I felt like nobody's on my side. I need to hire a lawyer just to make sure yeah. that I'm not being taken advantage of. And the way you feel and that's nobody was willing to give me the benefit of the doubt at all. As it turned out, the gentleman had also molested some other people. And so he ended up going to jail. But the I just, I vividly remember that how scary that was and how alone I felt. And I think a lot of women are scared of that feeling and are scared of not True. getting, um, not being believed and not being supported. And it's a really tough thing. And I didn't mean to bring the group down, but like I said, this is one that is really important to me because I've been on that side of it and it's hard and it stinks and it shouldn't be that way. So just needed to get my little rant out there and now I'm done and we can go back to having fun. <laughs> and I am going to move on. Um, one of the other questions that I have some concern about, so I wanted to discuss, is the idea that most everybody has an online presence nowadays. And you're out there. People can see you. They can see pictures of you. They may know where you work. They can have contact with you. 
I mean, and obviously we all do it voluntarily, but are you worried about that? Do you limit what's out there? Do you limit who can see your pages? Um, Jane, since you're right underneath me, I'll start with you. I'm not really concerned, but with my website, my business cards, everything on Facebook, I don't have my phone numbers. I don't mm -hmm. have my address. Well, phone numbers on my business card, but I don't have my address there. You know, just me. You're going to have to look for me to find me. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, so I'm not that. And if somebody posts something that I don't care for, I just either snooze them for 30 days or I block them if, you know, if I need to. But I'm also very careful, I think, about what I do put online. Okay. okay. I, I, I try to be, you know, I definitely, even though we don't go on a lot of vacations, I don't put anywhere, even on oh, my personal yeah. stuff, you yeah. know, hey, we're going, you know, it's always after the fact. We went to, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I guess I've been lucky, but I am very, I'm, I'm always in the yellow zone, you know, being cautious yeah. about what's out there. And I wonder too, and I'm going to throw this one to you, Janine, because I think you and I are kind of in the same situation a little bit in that we, we don't really own the businesses we work for, but mm -hmm. we're prominent in the public publicity mm -hmm. of them, maybe. Right. Um, there are things that are online for me because I'm part of Enmart. I'm part of the business I work for. Mm -hmm. And so people know me that way, but I'm, I don't always know if I'm comfortable sometimes. How do you feel about that? Or, and do you have any say in what goes up about you? Um, yes, to a great degree, I do. Okay. Well, the one good thing about working for a company like Fruit of the Loom is you do have resources, you know, that can help educate you um, in this area that you maybe hadn't thought of. So, for instance, we have an IT department, and within mm -hmm. the IT department, there are some cybersecurity people. And so they put on, you know, about every couple of months or so, they'll put on like a cybersecurity, you know, like training session. And they did one on social media recently. Oh, cool. And, you know, the really, there were some very scary factoids about how much information, you know, some of these companies can mine from your social media, you know, what you do, mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And the fact that the gal who's in charge for cybersecurity basically said, look, I don't have any social media at all. It's like, holy oh, cow, you know. Mm -hmm. When it comes to social media, I basically have a presence for business only. So mm -hmm. you're not going to find me personally out there on Facebook or, or Twitter or, or LinkedIn. But you'll have me representing the business that right. I'm responsible for. And that's about it. Yeah, I did the same thing. I have a Facebook page that's for the business. Um, oh, Carolyn says again, I find it odd that customers want to friend me on my personal page. No, you are a customer. I don't think they need to know my personal life, which I think that's true. And I have a pretty stringent policy myself as far as if somebody even wants to friend me on the business page. If I don't know who you are, I, if there isn't a business related reason why Mm -hmm. we should be friends, I'm probably not going to do it because rant, I mean, I went through a whole spate where I was getting like a lot of widowers from random countries <laughs> that wanted to be my friend. And I was like, I don't know why. But Jillian, what's your take on this? Well, as uh, Janine already said, you have to be careful with whatever's mm -hmm. out there on social media, scammers, hackers, all sorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, for that reason, when I started my business, I made the conscious decision to have a Facebook business page mm -hmm. and a personal page. Occasionally, yes, I do have crossover. Um, if I'm making something that I think would be very relevant to the area that I'm in, you just don't know mm -hmm. who's going to see that, especially at the moment where I've moved from Texas down to Louisiana. A lot of my customers are still in Texas. Mm -hmm. but I want to find those new customers in my area. So it, it's difficult to draw a line, but mm. common sense. You don't put yep. where you're going on holiday. Oh, sure. Uh, my business page, I can't have friends on my business page. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. They can like my business page. I can block them. Um, but, you know, for the most part, they will like my business page and that's just fine. They mm -hmm. very rarely know who the owner of my business page is, unless they already know me. It, you right. know, yeah. on my personal profile, 
that I am the owner designer for the cat's pajamas. But mm -hmm. on the cat's pajamas, it doesn't say my name's Jillian Allen. So I, I do try to keep as much as I can the two elements separate. Um, unlike Jane, unfortunately, yes, I am still looking for business. So that <laughs> does mean I'm a little bit more out there in, in what I post. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the, I, I try to be very careful, though, as to where I do you know, mm. I, I won't say in advance what I'm doing, but yes, behind the scenes or after the event, yes, I went to the ISS show, the IE as it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, right. all this kind of thing. And I also understand, uh, as Janine has said, that unfortunately we have to be aware and there's that very fine line between no presence and too mm, much. Too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's a hard line to walk sometimes, I think, because, you know, especially if you're trying to run a business and you're trying to get customers and you're trying to make your name and be known, you know, I mean, I Googled myself the other day, which I know, incredibly egotistical, but I did it anyway, just to see where I was, because I knew we were going to be talking about this. And there's a lot of stuff out there, because I've been writing and speaking and doing whatever. And I mean, all of it was good, but there's details that slip in that yes. you don't really realize are there until you read it. And then you go, oh, um, okay, here's a good one from Allison. Great topic. My background is as a criminologist. My concern is for our younger employees that have grown up in the digital age. They truly do not realize how much of their privacy they have given away. And true. I think that's so true. And you can make the argument that privacy is a non-existent thing anymore. But, you know, uh, so many details for of so many things, and particularly when you're female, you know, there, unfortunately, there are people out there who are predators. Yes. And they will take that information and use it. And that's not cool. So, obviously. But um, I think that's all good points on that one. And I do, I want to ask this question because I have a few things that annoy me and I'm, what is the safety tip that people always give women that annoys you the most? And I'm going to leave mine for now, but um, Jillian, let's start with you because I saw you smile. So. <laughs> well, the, the number of times we're told, you know, oh, you shouldn't go out at night on your own. Hello. Yeah, true. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Um, if I am as vulnerable at night as I would be at any other time of the day. True. I know the safety precautions that I take, and I do take them all the time. I almost want to go back to the very first question, you know, about when we're traveling. It's not just when we're traveling. You sure. could be going to the grocery store, to the mailbox. You you have to know what you're limits are what mm -hmm. your uh comfort zone is almost yes and just have those common sense things um i know we're not going to get on to the, the the devices but you know think about it there's lots of things out there to make us all comfortable why shouldn't i go out at night sorry right over. well no i think that's a very valid point and i mean if you want to get into the devices go for it because i think there are things out there that are very useful and, you know, I mean, there's the whole debate about guns, no guns, you know, that's one thing. But there are other things that you can do if you're not particularly comfortable with having a gun. But a whistle, you know, yeah, pepper, spray, pepper spray, whatever a like that. Wa wasp or hornet spray. Right. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. That'll get off. Because it, it shoots a long way. You, yes, yeah. you mm -hmm. can have it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I have a dog. If you so much as even look at my house, she's going to be all over you, even though she's about 15 pounds. She's my early alert system. I have a video doorbell, which is great. Most people don't even use the doorbell anymore. They don't want to bother it. They don't realize the minute you step it within view, it starts recording. I also have a gun. I've got a concealed carry permit. I'm there you go. Out in the yep. county and great police force, but it may take them a couple of minutes to get to me. So, you know, I went through the, the training class and I go to the shooting range every now and then. Yep. And go through there a you box go. That's very liberating, by the way. So yeah. well, and <laughs> I have is. to. I would <laughs> guess of the four of us here, I'm probably the only one that isn't licensed to carry right now. But I'm thinking about it. So. Well, and I don't always carry when I'm 
the multiple pistols that Tim has bought me over the years, but I have them <laughs> handy, you know, and, but I'm always in the yellow zone, as he would always right, tell me, and being right. very aware. But what really helps me here is uh, we have four cameras, four static cameras around the exterior of the house. Mm -hmm. And I have a monitor over my computer that shows all four of those cameras all the time. And then we have the video doorbell, which I love, uh, especially mm -hmm. since one of our cats will set it off when she goes outside, when she <laughs> waddles down the sidewalk. <laughs> and then this past summer before we took a trip, because the cameras we have, I have to open an app and see what's going on. So we added uh, three more uh, ring cameras that will alert me and no one can get on this property without me knowing you know that they're there because see they're going to alert me on the phone or what I have in here and what I did we don't have a dog we just got the cats but right. my uh, alert signal for the camera in the backyard is dogs barking there you yeah. go and and it's loud so if somebody comes close to the backyard they're going to hear dogs barking right and possibly think but i feel much more secure here since i'm home and since our neighborhood's changing because of flooding and almost all the houses across the street from us are either been torn down in the process of being torn oh. down so i'm kind of yeah. you know by myself but having the cameras and having the motion you know set them off i don't care how often it goes off at least i know mm -hmm. what's going on right and i think that's a lot of what we're we've all been talking about and i think it's true is taking charge of your personal yes. safety mm -hmm. of you know not trusting that somebody else is going to take care of it for you and yep. just realizing that you have to be aware and you have to, you know, carry whatever sort of safety devices or protection you want to carry and also know how to use that stuff. And um, be willing to use it. And be if willing you're going to carry, it. you've got to be willing to, you know, you, not, right. you're not going to go to wound them. You're going to go to make them stop. Right. And that's very difficult for women, I think, more than anything about I've got this gun with me, but can I use it? Yep. I well, I think that's that's a really good point, Jane, and I like mm -hmm. you saying that because I think a lot of women sometimes think, well, I have this, I have a gun or I have my pepper spray or I have my taser or I have whatever I have. And so therefore I'm safer. But you're right. It's the intent. Mm -hmm. It's can mm -hmm. you use yeah. it yeah. if mm -hmm. it really comes down to it? And that's a question you really have to ask yourself because that's like a monumental life changing thing. Yes. So I like that. That's like, oh, now I want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's an interesting, I mean, even if you weren't, even if it's not a gun, if it's pepper spray or taser or something, you're obviously going to injure or hurt whoever you're with. So what's the thought process where you say, did you guys all do that reflection before you decided how you were going to protect yourselves that I could... Yeah. I, I did, and, and my husband and I talked about it because he's big on guns because he shoots sporting clays and goes mm. hunting and everything. But when I decided to get my, at that time it was concealed carry, but now it's just licensed to carry in Texas. And I went out to our uh, gun range that he goes to all the time to and took the class. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, the sheriff's deputy that was doing the uh, training said ask each one of us and there was me and a girlfriend there with a bunch of guys and you know if you were confronted if you were in this situation would you be able to pull mm -hmm. the trigger I'm like, yep if I'm threatened yes you know I, okay. I, I'm going to do mm -hmm. that but I had to because it's kind of a little bit of a funny story with actually getting licensed after we'd had the classroom stuff, we went out to the range to shoot and he had everybody lay their guns down on the table and he went to each one of them and asked the guys, you know, so why did you pick this one? You know, why are you carrying this? And it was always this big macho, you know, uh, Clint Eastwood kind of thing with all their guns. And they got down, I was the one on the end and he goes, so why did you 
select this pistol? And I said, well, because the color of the handle enhances the green in my eyes. <laughs> and, and he just stood there. <laughs> and finally he goes, oh, okay. Because <laughs> it was olive drab and it, you know, it just went well with my eyes. eyes. I I like my eyes. Well, you know, accessories are important. <laughs> yeah. And then when we were actually shooting, and this is kind of, you know, I'm a little bit legendary out of the shooting range. I don't go as much as I used to, but most of the, t of the target that I hit is in the crotch area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have extra All right. oh, that's too funny well janine you were laughing at that so what was your process for that pretty much the same thing so you know i was talking to a couple of people here and a couple of the gals here their husbands are either you know firemen or on the police force and they actually said well, we actually have guns and so you know they went through the concealed carry and so i went to the local gun range i had no idea what i was doing and walked in. It's a small gun range, a couple blocks down from the office. It's family owned, and they were very nice. And said, "Well, here's kind of what you need, and here's the class that you need to take." And um, and then they've been very helpful in terms of, you know, when I go back with a gun, it's an inside gun range. There's mm -hmm. a, a firearms instructor there, so if I end up, I'm on that for if I end up, you know, kind of getting in a pickle like the, the mm -hmm. or something like that, there's somebody there that can help me out. So I will say that. You know, having a, a gun is something that you have to take seriously. I don't mean to make light of it, um, but it is something that if you'd asked me 20 years ago, I would have said that I would never have owned one. But mm -hmm. times have changed. So. Right. Well, Jillian, I really want to ask this one of you, largely because you come from somewhere that is not here <laughs> <laughs> or was not here originally. Um, so, and I will be the first to say I know zero or very little about the laws in the UK and, and Europe about gun, guns and who can carry them and why, but, um, what, what was your process like for making this decision and coming from someplace that wasn't the US where guns are kind of accepted, did you have... Did it give you any more pause because of that, or did you just kind of go with it? That's kind of an incoherent question, and I apologize, <laughs> but I know where I'm going. <laughs> well, I think I know where I'll go when I answer it. Um, okay. When I was trained to be part of the arrest team, we trained at the Tully Allen Police College. Now, at that time, uh, we were not an armed force. To the best of my knowledge, they are still not an armed force. Okay. But as you will understand, I have been gone from the UK for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, but we were trained in different ways to, to protect ourselves. We had an extending baton. We did not have pepper spray. We did not have tasers. None of that. Ooh. Would you believe that the best form of protection that they taught us was communication? Mm, makes sense. Verbal, talking people down. And makes sense. Well, as we've all said, we can all talk. Yeah, okay. yeah there you go. Um, I think we've proven that. I think we've proven that. So, so that was was huge. The, the actual avoidance rather than getting yourself into this the situation that you needed to mm -hmm. have one. Um, when we moved to Texas, I, and I told you about the uh, occasion where the gentleman asked me about the guns, mm -hmm. um, we had never really thought about owning a gun ourselves. Uh, shortly after that, we went with friends to Loving in Texas to this little shack that they had use of. And that was where I shot my first gun. And they had a lot of toys for us to play with. Um, there is a picture somewhere of they had an oil can and they put branches in for arms and legs. And they had a spare branch. I'll let you imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that's that too is, good. That is the branch that I took out with my very first shot. So I hear you, Jane. <laughs> That's my shot, okay? Um, oh. And again, at that time, it was just, it was fun. I can't say we seriously thought about getting a gun for protection. We bought our first gun, which happened to be a Glock, just for having fun with friends. Uh, we mm -hmm. were part of a motorbike group. We used to go to a range once a month it was fun mm -hmm. um 
I did my test with that Glock, my LTC, the day after I bought it. Hadn't shot it before, went, did my test, passed, no big deal. But yes, as part of the exam, they do ask, would you be prepared to use it? Mm -hmm. And I think because of my training, one of the things that we were taught is muscle memory. A uh, question we didn't get to was, had you taken a personal safety mm -hmm. course? Mm -hmm. They can teach you all the moves in the world if you don't remember them, if you don't know how to right. use them, if mm -hmm. you're not practicing them, you will freeze. Ask me, that's what I did when I had my personal abuse mm -hmm. scenario that we'll not talk about. I froze and I had had the training. So mm -hmm. this is the thing, you have to practice. It has to be muscle memory, it has to become instinctive. So that's why we try to go to the range. We don't always get there, but we do. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, would I protect myself? Yes, I would. Yeah. I primarily have, I, I now have a Smith & Wesson, and I primarily have it for in the house because that's where I work. Mm -hmm. um, I have my ring doorbells. I have my cameras. Mm -hmm. It's sad that we have to do prevention, but mm -hmm. it's just another tool in my armament. It's just one more tool. Right, right. Well, you know, I would love to have you guys back for about 14 more sessions of this because you are amazing and I think there's so much more we could talk about but we're almost on bonus time now so I'm going to send the call out for Eric and see if he's there anywhere because if we get started on another there he is if we get started on another question it's we're gonna go. It's seriously we need round two, guys. Oh, I think so. Honestly, you guys, it's been so great listening to you. I mean, some of the stories are obviously heartbreaking and hard. We, you're right. We don't. We don't know. I don't think as men we hear these stories necessarily either in a personal way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to thank everybody for sharing those. But yeah, it's. Uh, I'm listening to the show. I'm like, wow, this is a really good show. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm producing the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm glad that you called me out because otherwise I'm like, oh wow, this is great. Uh, <laughs> well, I figured I better call you out, or I was going to go to the next question, and we were going to be here for another half an hour. Yeah. And I know we can have a little bonus time, but not too much. So we well, you know we're going to do this again coming into the next year. So uh, absolutely, yeah. but thank you personally, I mean, for me, but for <laughs> as a listener right now, but also from everybody too. Really, guys, thank you all for being on. It's been really yes. great, and thank you, Christine, for hosting. So it's been thank a you all. Yeah. All right, I will drop you guys all out. Okay. Carrie <laughs> and, and I will finish Bye. off. Bye. <laughs> all right, Terry. All right. Great show, wasn't it? Man. <laughs> Oh, it was a fantastic show. Like I said, I almost couldn't uh, peel myself away from the show as a listener long yeah. enough to, yeah, <laughs> to get back really, on. The time really flew by. It really did. Now, I, but also, by the way, if nobody has noticed, we've got uh, Aaron is listening in while he's doing something else. So he couldn't help but comment a couple of times and say, Aaron, isn't it nice to listen to the show? It's pretty great, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that, let's hear a brief word from our sponsor over at uh, Ace Transfer. Have you been looking to grow your business or start one in the garment decoration industry? After all, that's why you're listening, right? Ace Transfer Company is located in Springfield, Ohio, and we've provided our customers with high-quality transfers, competitive prices, and great customer service for nearly 30 years. Ace Transfer Company offers a wide variety of garment decoration services, including screen-printed transfers, contract screen printing, direct-to-garment or DTG, dye sublimation, signs, banners, heat transfer vinyl, pressure-sensitive vinyl, and more. Use your own designs or have our in-house artists assist you in creating eye-catching transfers. At Ace, we are dedicated to helping your business succeed, so print your vision at Ace. For more information, visit our website, acetransfercompany.com, send us an email at acetransco at gmail.com, that's A-C-E-T-R-A-N-S-C-O at gmail, or give us a call at 800-525-3126. All right. All right. Well, thanks to uh, the great friend of the show, uh, David Shaw, and everyone over there at Ace Transfer. Absolutely. Good to have them on. And now we have some events and stuff. I think we may try and be a little tight with the events because we're in bonus time, but let's go ahead and talk about some stuff. I know one thing I absolutely have to talk about, and Aaron is probably who's going to get on my case if I don't. Uh, we've 
earlier announced that I'll be doing an online webinar based on uh, some of my classes I often do at trade shows. Everybody says, why aren't you doing them online? Well, now I am. And I'll be doing uh, March 28th, 2020. Aside from all the other stuff at DAX and things that we're going to announce as we come up to them, uh, demystifying, uh, digitizing webinar coming on March 28th. Uh, better running, bolder, more beautiful embroidery, the faster cycle from concept to completion. Uh, details and bonus content will be available from ericcampbell.com slash demystifying digitizing webinar. And I will throw that in the comments right now. And uh, Aaron is actually helping me to do this stuff. So you guys should thank him for me getting out and doing the actual exactly. <laughs> work <laughs> of being on and doing these in the, in the uh, online format. But yeah, trade show level seminars coming to you online from me in the next year. <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome. Well, hey, uh, I'll just give a couple of mine real quick. December 12th and 13th, I'm going to be uh, one of the speakers at Equipment Zone's DTG Academy uh, right in Phoenix, uh, in Tempe, actually. You can go to equipmentzone.com for more information about that. And uh, real quick, uh, another reminder, February 23rd through 25th, the two regular guys will be on the air and interviewing guests throughout ThreadX 2020, powered by SGIA. And again, it's going to be near my place in Scottsdale, Arizona. And you can find all of my upcoming 2020 events and had some changes today with uh, with the folks at Atlas Screen Supply. We kind of rearranged some things. So if you're looking to go to one of the classes in Chicago or Nashville next year, make sure that you go to my website under tour dates and check the, the rearrangement of the schedule. And uh, do you want to, uh, Eric, talk a little yeah. bit about Aaron's? Let's talk a little bit about what Aaron's going on. I know he's got one big thing that just got launched, and I'm excited to share this with you. Uh, he's doing a series of five success key videos and webinars with Todd Downing, also a friend of the show and guest on the show from uh, exactly. Fat Dad. Uh, check out the details at OurSuccessGroup.com, and he's actually got a special code for you folks. The code EARLY will save you 25 bucks, and I've seen some stuff going on from Todd and from Aaron, and it is just incredible. They really are just a, a beacon of positivity and giving people a lot of great hints on business and doing business, as we know, Aaron big on business plans and such. Uh, we also have, uh, as we know, uh, Aaron's going to be at the International Awards and Personalization Expo doing his digital marketing seminar, Tuesday uh, 218 at 436. Also, he's got Social Media 101 that Tuesday, 8 to 9.30. There's a sublimation panel also at Wednesday, 19, 6 p.m. And DAX Kansas City, we'll all get to announce our DAX stuff here coming up soon, but we are all present at DAX. We are all going to be teaching seminars. So we'll have six or seven things to tell you to go see, some of them competing, and uh, we promise to be nice and not fight. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, honestly, we are in bonus time enough that we'll go ahead and start to close the show. I'd like to thank our guests again, having uh, Janine and Jillian and Jane, and of course, Christine, who had a, did a great job sharing uh, just insights that I think need to be shared out there and things that don't always get talked about. So great to have them on and really, like we said, a show that was great to listen to for us. It really was enjoyable. It was a great show. But uh, hey, we also want to thank you, Eric, uh, for sitting in today and, and uh, all of our sponsors, Impressions Expo, Printavo, and Ace Transfer Company. Absolutely. Uh, next week, we're going to be announcing the winners of the 2019 Reggie Awards. Now, I probably won't be on screen, but you believe I will be in the comments because that is going to be such a big one. Uh, thousands of votes, folks. Thousands of votes. If there's someone you haven't voted for yet, it's time to do it now. It's, it, <laughs> voting's open until next Thursday, so don't yep. wait. Get in there today. But yep. until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Eric Campbell sitting in for uh, today for Aaron Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.